It's only only sort of second season as trader. You must be pretty delighted with how it's going so far. Yeah, no, it started great. Um, thank God. Um, we obviously trained our, our first winner with our first runner. So um, yeah, we've gone from strength to strength since we've since we started, and we're just starting to up the quality now. So yeah, no, all's going great. And you were saying the numbers are sort of expanded almost exponentially. Really, it's really grown. You've had to build facilities quickly and to to cape with the numbers. Yeah, no, we've um, we, we we've been growing. Uh, Almost every day, we're uh, we're up to we're riding out nearly a hundred horses now. So um, yeah, we started out with half a dozen, and uh, yeah, it's grown in a short space of time. But that's through the the place having success and 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 doing things the right way. So now we're delighted with how things are going. Excellent. And so, what sort of facilities have you got here? Um, it's Warren Chase, isn't it? It is. Yeah. No, we're here in in Warren Chase, which is actually where I where I grew up. So uh, it's a it's a family owned place. We've um, we've a hundred stables, um, three horse walkers. Uh, uh, four and a half furlong Wexford sand gallop, uh, half mile carpet, five a gallop. We've um, a poly track schooling ring. Um, you know, we've we've scoring facilities on grass, and uh, you know we're very lucky. We've we've four hundred acres as well, so um, you know I'm very lucky to be where I am. Beautiful. And and sort of what are, what are the main ambitions for you really, or is it just kind of day by day? Listen, I suppose the the ultimate aim is is to be champion trainer. I think if you didn't have that aim, you shouldn't be training racehorses. So um, listen, we're ambitious. We're um. We're trying to do things the right way. I think there's, I think there's five trainers in England that have trained more winners than us this year. And, and, and for, for a team that's only been going 18 months, you know, I'm, I'm proud of everyone that's underneath me and things are going great. Excellent. And, and, and sort of obviously uh, on the horizon, we've got Cheltenham and, and some of the big meetings coming up. You've got some nice horses looking ahead. So we'll start with um, Thomas Darby. Um, sort of shaken up, but eventually quite a cosy winner last time out at Taunton. He's in the Betfair hurdle at the weekend uh, and entered in both the Supreme and Ballymore. Sort of, how's he come out of his run at Taunton first yeah, and foremost? No, absolutely fine. I gave him a quiet ten days since he came back from Taunton. He definitely won't run in the Betfair on Saturday. Um, he'll uh, he'll go straight for the Supreme, all being well. I just think a fast run two miles on on good ground will suit him well. So. Listen, people like to knock him, he looks a bit awkward, but I think that's just him. Um, his form is very strong when you look back through it, beating Elixir de Nuts. And uh, yeah, no, I think he's going to go there with, a, with, a, with an each way chance if he turns up on his, on, on, on his A game. Okay, so another one that's very likeable is uh, Itchy Feet. He served it up to Elixir de Nuts last seen at Cheltenham in November. What's he been up to since that run? He's just had a winter break. He's a horse who doesn't want real soft ground. So uh, we gave him a quiet six weeks. He's back and now he looks great. I might give him a prep run. Um, we may well look at Kempton in the in, in the back end of February, but uh, listen, if I had to go there a fresh horse, it wouldn't bother me. He's got plenty of experience, and uh, I thought he was a big price, and he was a horse who definitely outrun his odds. And that Supreme novice is you're definitely yeah, going he's for. going to go for the Supreme. Um, he'll have an entry in a handicap or two as well, but now the Supremes that are uh, our main target. Excellent, fantastic. Uh, brewing up a storm. Another likable type. He was running a great race, possibly going to be the winner, I would say, when falling last time at Cheltenham. Has he come out in the fall okay first and foremost? Yeah, no, he's absolutely fine. He's back riding out. Um, listen, it was unfortunate, but we train jumpers, so if you don't jump, you don't win. Um, he's um, he's going the right way. Listen, we had to jump, pop out and make the running in, in, in Cheltenham the last day, which wasn't ideal. And I still thought he'd have won regardless of, of having to do the donkey work. But uh, he's going to go to Cheltenham for the Ballymore. Uh, he seems in good form. Again, a truly run race, I think will suit him well and we'll be able to take our time a little bit more. But... Uh, yeah, no, he's, a, he's an exciting horse, and we're, one, one we're looking really, really looking forward to. Excellent. Well, he actually has entries for both Ballymore and Supreme, but you're saying leaning definitely towards Ballymore now? Yeah, no, he'll, he'll, he'll run the Ballymore. Um, he just had an entry in the Supreme, just in case it came up very, very soft. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be amazed if we didn't go for the Ballymore. OK, and he won't have a run before then? He won't, no. He'll go there a fresh horse now, and um, I wouldn't be worried about his fall. He's generally a good jumper, so, um, yeah, no, he's in, he's in good form, and, yeah, all roads lead to, to the Wednesday Cheltenham. Excellent. Uh, Rio Quinto, he was sort of fairly consistent before a wind up, and then after taking a run, he won in good style at Lingfield. That was his first run, uh, first run of offences. Um, he actually came back from Newby sick, which was his first okay. run of the year. So always a horse I thought a, a bit of. He was he probably underachieved now in um, in his first season as a novice for me last year, but uh, he's strengthened up. He's only just turned six, and he'd just be a nice staying chaser in time. He's got an entry in the in the four mile in the RSA. He'd have to go and win. 
well in the meantime to warrant going there. But uh, yeah, he's a horse who's going to win plenty of races. Whether he goes to Cheltenham would be questionable. Okay, and and would you have a preference of RSA or National Hunt? Oh, just I suppose it just depends how he runs and where he where he runs the next day. But uh, he does stay well, so it wouldn't bother me if we had to, had to go four miles. Okay, and and next run still up in the air. Yeah, he's in at Doncaster in the middle of this week, um, but uh, he wants a bit of cut in the ground, I think. So we'll just have to wait till the rain comes. Okay, uh, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. Don Cesar de Prito. He was recruited from France, given quite a long break. Finished second on his first run for you at Fakenham. But you must think quite highly of him. Yeah, nice horse. Um, he actually didn't come back from faking 100%. I was um, very disappointed he didn't win that day. But, uh, yeah, he's come back fine. A big chase from the making. Um, again, wants plenty of cut in the ground, so need the rain to come. But he'll get two and a half miles on a big galloping track somewhere the next day and hopefully you'll see a different horse. OK, so just giving him a bit of time, really. Exactly, yeah. No, he won't be, won't be Cheltenham bound, but uh, just to get his confidence back and, uh, and moving him back in the right direction. OK, so we move on to Finnorn Bourne. You looked to make Aidan Coleman work quite hard when finishing third in a good race at Warwick. Yeah, and I ran very well that day. Just didn't jump well enough down the back when they turned the taps on. Um, still very novice a lovely stay and chaser in time. Um, we'll have a run in the next fortnight somewhere. You may well get a Haydock for the Albert Bartlett trial to, uh, week Saturday. Um, and then we'd have a look at the at the Albert Bartley. He'll also have an entry in the, in the conditional jockeys race at Cheltenham, but okay. he's really a horse for next year, but he has got a big engine, and uh, I thought he ran very well in Warwick, so I just didn't think things went according to plan really that day. OK. There's still options for him at Cheltenham, you think? Yeah. No, he'd have to go and run well or, or, or win the next day to warrant going, but uh, I think the Albert Bartlett can throw up funny results, so, uh, yeah, he's got an entry. He's rated 135. He'd have to go up. Five or six, seven pound to be mm. in the reckoning of uh, of running well, but I don't think that's beyond all possibility. So, cool. Another horse I've made a note of, not Graffen, uh, because he sort of seems to like his running up in Scotland. Quite highly rated. Um, is he sort of worth keeping an eye on? Do you think? Yeah, likable type. Um, he may well have an entry in in the two five handicap in in Cheltenham. Um, he might get a Warwick on Saturday for a fifty grand two and a half mile chase. Um, he wins his race every year. Um, he won a nice race up in Musselburgh on New Year's Day for the second year running. Um, he may well end up running in the in the two and a half mile race over the big fences in in entry in April something like that. But he's a, he's a likable type that pays his way, and yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't mind a few more like him. Excellent. Um, and just any others you've you've got obviously plenty in. Um, a few sort of exciting younger horses. Who who should we be keeping an eye on? Yeah, I'm very lucky. We've, we've a lot of nice young horses now for next year. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a work in progress at the moment, really. But I have some lovely bumper horse to run in the next kind of fortnight. Um, Blazers Mill, lovely horse. Nicholson's a very nice horse. Rocket um, and a horse called Fitzroy ran well first time out. They're four horses that won't be far away in bumps in the next fortnight. And so have a couple of lovely horses for, for Mr McManus now. So it's a privilege to be training with him as well. And... Uh, a nice mare for Jared Sullivan, Monbeg Zena. Um, Smackwater Jack's going to go for the EBF final. Um, I thought he had, had a good run the last day in Taunton. So we have a lot of young horses. We haven't got a lot of handicappers, but uh, the whole thing's a work in progress. And uh, as you said, we've only been going 18 months. So uh, hopefully two or three years down the line, we'll have a lot more handicappers and a lot more horses that are, are stable in there, joining their categories.